Sparrow's Dance, first requested to me by Hate Filth and directed by Noah Bouchel, is a 2012 romantic drama film that primarily takes place in a New York City apartment. The film accounts the story of an agoraphobic, a woman who refuses to leave her apartment because she feels anxiety every time she does or tries to do so. She goes through a similar routine each day and never actually leaves her safe space, her apartment. But one day she has a plumbing issue and she calls a plumber who she eventually forms a connection with. These two strike up a romance and Wes the plumber attempts to get this woman out of her shell. As the romance grows, so does the uncertainty. Arts of Sparrow's Dance is another entirely new request. I didn't watch a trailer, I didn't know anything about it going in. So yeah, no expectations going into this one, I just kind of watched it pretty blind I'd say. It's a simplistic movie ultimately, but it's insightful enough to make the basic premise work at a high level. There's only two characters in this entire film, an hour and 20 minutes, and you really only meet two of the main characters like in a true sense that you really know or even meet these characters at all. It's super bare bones, and it's an experience that truly tries to say something important about the power of love, and how a partner can sometimes motivate us to evolve into something better than we were the day before. It often takes a catalyst to instill change. And when you're dug in so deep to the monotony of your routine, it can actually take something remarkably simple to break you out of it, which is kind of interesting. Part of the film's charm is that simplicity. We watch a pretty typical relationship, I'd say, with a slight twist to it. The main character's agoraphobia, and we watch the sparks fly regardless of all those things. The part that's interesting, though, is the growth from the main character that we see over the course of the film. We start seeing an entirely different side to her solely because this guy brought her out of her shell. We see a slow growth to the point where eventually, the main character almost becomes a completely different person altogether. She still retains that baggage that makes her who she is as a character, but she's much more willing to open up. I really love the performance of the main character because she beautifully plays a character that appears lost. She's struggling with a mental disorder and she feels like she has nothing to live for. And she feels that her life's at a pure standstill, which it is in a lot of ways. That is until her routine is interrupted and she's pulled out of a funk from her plumber. This is the kind of romance that's simplistic, like I mentioned, but powerful. It makes you realize that sometimes destiny intertwines us in ways we're not expecting, even ways we think are bad for us at the time, that ultimately prove necessary to help us grow as an individual. This is the kind of romance story that actually means something because it digs deeper while also leaving a lot of room for interpretation. There's a lot to digest here and it's all compelling stuff. There were certainly times though where I felt like the film needed to grow with its main character, to expand and build upon a foundation in a way that felt fluid and natural. It does to an extent, and I sometimes found the purposeful monotony of the entire experience to be less than engaging, I'd say. This isn't the norm, it only happens every so often when you feel like the story needs to expand in its scope, but that's just not the end goal with a film when you think about it. The end goal is to be as minimalist as possible in an effort to cut out all the other distractions and focus on what makes the movie great, the romance and what you can learn from it. The two performances are also really great. I already mentioned the woman in the apartment and how great she was, but I gotta give the utmost credit to Marin Ireland here because her work was just brilliant in this film. She does a brilliant job at playing her character dynamically. A character with flaws is a character that's realistic because we all have them. The way she expresses a feeling of dread when she wakes up each morning is really remarkable and kind of sad to watch in a way. It almost feels like you're at times watching a documentary of a vicious cycle that can occur with this type of anxiety disorder. It's debilitating and in that way, it feels kind of dark. Paul Sparks plays Wes and he's also great, but in a different kind of way. He's funny, he's charming, he's charismatic, and he's just a very likable character because he's doing everything he can to help the main character overcome her fears. What's also interesting about Wes though is that he has flaws too, and he openly shares them with her. He talks about his fears of not being accepted, how he struggles with anxiety, and how he doesn't judge anyone else for having to deal with similar issues. I like his character a lot because he never comes across as disingenuous. He's open and honest and he's easy to root for in his efforts to not only overcome his own fears, but to help the woman he cares about in her apartment overcome hers as well. I also like the music a lot. Part of the backstory of Wes is that he's a saxophone player in a jazz group, so the film incorporates a lot of jazz music into scenes where the characters will either be listening to it together or just hang out and getting to know each other better and it's just kind of on in the background. It almost becomes like Wes's changing theme music, all the jazz songs. It just helps you become more connected to the story and to these characters. I'm not a huge fan of jazz music, honestly, I probably told you guys that before, but I liked it a lot here, and I liked it in La La Land too, for that matter. Maybe I do like jazz. But let's take a look at the pros cons list as we wrap up. As for the pros, I thought Sparrow's Dance delivers a heartfelt and insightful romance story, plenty of great commentary on love and overcoming your fears, two great performances, and some sweet jazz music. As for the cons, I say the film's simplicity is not always consistently engaging. It's generally fine, but it doesn't always expand and grow as most would probably like. 
Overall, I'm gonna give Sparrow's Dance a nine out of 10 and recommend you check it out, but only if you're into super small and intimate stories like this. It's very minimalistic, but insightful nonetheless. So have you guys seen Sparrow's Dance before? What did you think of it? And if not, let me know whether it sounds like something you'd enjoy or not. Also, let me know your favorite romance film of all time. It's still La La Land for me. Nothing stopped it yet. It's just such an amazing film from start to finish. Either way, this is Wolf Oxification signing off. See you in the next video.